Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Fascinating Womanhood channel, where we talk about everything that has to do with developing femininity, building long-lasting and loving relationships. I am Dixie Andalyn Forsyth, and today I have kind of a fun thing. We found a video of my mother from 1970, where she was on, it was a game show called To Tell the Truth. You can see her moving around and talking, and a lot of you've never got to see her. We figured out this was 1970, and we came across it kind of by chance. My cousin saw my mother come on, and she, this was years ago, she popped a VHS tape in there and got <clears throat> most of it. If any of you haven't heard of the game show, To Tell the Truth, it's a show where you, uh, a panelist where they have, and contestants where they have three people and the panelists have to guess which one is the real person, the one that has some notoriety. In this day, it was my mother. And so they, they ask questions and they're timed and they can try to find out who is the real Helen Andalyn. It's a very low quality recording. It wasn't meant to be viewed over and over, I don't think. And you'll notice that these are timed answers, so they interrupt a lot. And so my mom's answers are often very quick and not complete. I will kind of narrate a little bit as we go along and give you some interesting things about her. So here we go. Let's, uh, let's start this. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Helen Andalyn. Here's the three ladies. And you can see that she's quite nervous. Number three. My name is Helen Andalyn. All right, and here is uh, Helen Andalyn's story. Listen carefully, please. I, Helen Andalyn, enjoy being a girl. I firmly believe that it is not only a woman's duty, but her greatest delight to devote herself to the fine feminine task of caring for and pleasing her man. No matter how much they shout and carry on, women are not men. They think differently and have their own unique emotional makeup. I truly believe that fulfillment as a woman comes from the practice of those feminine arts that are not only that not only make a woman more of a woman, but help make her man more of a man. In order to bring my theories to the attention of American women, I organized the fascinating Womanhood Foundation. However, I am no longer head of this foundation. I turned it all over to my husband. <laughs> you see, the whole thing became a man-sized job. Signed, Helen Andalyn. I think my husband, Bob, went to L.A. and helped her get that, those clothes. He, Bob's really good at shopping for clothes. And Helen has written a very fascinating book with a very dainty pink-on-pink -pink cover called Fascinating Womanhood. And we'll be back to talk about this uh, fascinating thing. Well, let's start right now. Peggy Cass, what? do you want to... Hello there, dear. Hi. <laughs> Do you, you want to talk to these ladies and find out about this whole thing? Yes, I do. All right. Okay, number three. Uh, uh, um, how can a person be fascinating and, and, uh, and feminine arts? You, you think you See, this uh, Peggy Cass doesn't understand much about femininity. It's, it's going to make us fascinating. Well, the real fascinating woman, it all comes from within. It all starts with inner qualities. And in my book, I talk about the two different qualities, the angelic side of the woman and the human side. And you need both of these in order to be the ideal woman from the man's viewpoint. Maggie, you make it sound like gone with the wind kind of a lady. I mean, number one, girls have to run dishwashers and fry eggs and, 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 and do housework. They can't sit around looking like angels. I mean, don't you believe that women should go out and get a job? See, she misunderstands and thinks that women have to, when they fry eggs and wash dishes, that they cannot be feminine. And I feel bad that she doesn't have this knowledge then. Uh, well, no, I think a woman's uh, greatest responsibility is to create a happy marriage and to make a happy home and to uh, be a wonderful a wife. Marriage. Be a wonderful wife. And, uh, well, I don't think that that's her main... I, think, I don't agree with you by George. I just don't. <laughs> Number two, I feel like... <laughs> Thank you, Peggy, for a fascinating series of statements. <laughs> <laughs> no questions, lots of statements. Let's go to Bill Keller. It's not by George, it's by Sylvia. If you're going... <laughs> Number number two, what is it you think that women's lib wants that they that they should not have that you don't agree with? Number two. Well, I think the important uh, thing for women 
is to uh, to uh, follow their inner desires and also to make their men happy. And I think women's lib, I'm against that because they uh, they just want to re sort of replace a lot of this. Thank you. Number, number one, there are a lot of there are some things that women's lib has talked about that are sort of ridiculous, maybe to gain attention. But basically, uh, can't uh, can't you have all those things, most of those things they want, and still be feminine? Number one. Well, I think you can work and be feminine, but right. I think you can't be feminine if you don't like being a woman. I think you have to first like being a woman and like making a man happy. Now, this is a really important part because even today, a lot of people have misunderstood my mother and thought that her original book, which we call Classic Fascinating Womanhood, means you cannot or should not work. And she clarifies it right here. She's saying that you, you can work and be feminine. Number three, don't you think a lot of the people in the room... Thank you, Derby. We go, I mean, uh, Bill, and we go to Kitty. Well, number two, of course women aren't men. It looks to me as though you're pushing against the open door. Obviously, women are not supposed to be men. But what is this angelic side of women that you seem <laughs> yeah. to, to uh, stress? Well, I think that, uh, that what we mustn't lose sight of are the high ideals of womanhood. I see. You see. Thank you. Uh, number three, do you believe a woman can work and still be feminine and please her man? Well, I feel that the most important job a woman can have is to be as good a wife as well, possible, he, but this doesn't necessarily, thank you. necessarily preclude you. Number one, supposing to be a good wife, he needs the supplement to his income. Don't you think she ought to get out there and turn to and, order, and earn a buck? Uh, well, most women work for luxuries, and I don't oh, not think... not true, not true, oh <laughs> dear no. I think that a woman should not neglect her home if, uh, I mean, I don't think a woman should work if it means neglecting the home. This is a one part that is, they cut her off, and she didn't get to finish what she was going to say, but saying that most women work for luxuries is not true. It was kind of true in her world at, at that point that the women she knew that did but she was certainly aware of of women they didn't let her finish women that must work number two do you think she ought to always look absolutely like i'm Charlie sorry O'Hara? kitty are we gonna go to Derry? <laughs> thank you gary number two may i ask how long have you been married uh 23 years number one and how long have you been married 28 years and number three five years uh, have you been married? Number one, have you been married to the same man all the time? Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, uh, caring for and pleasing your man. Who taught you this, number two? Well, I think it's a part of woman's nature to love and plea and want to make your man happy and to love him. Number three, uh, are you a religious person? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Number one, uh, do you think that today's fashions lend themselves toward femininity? No, I do not. I think clothes should be more feminine. I notice that you're the only one in the group there who has a dress who comes down just uh, a, a nudge below your knees. Um, you notice those things, huh? don't you? I catch all that stuff before, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that does is it. That is voting time. Mark your ballots mentally at home, actually on the panel, and mark them for one or for two, or for three. Keep me in mind that it costs you $50 for a wrong guess, $500 if all the guesses are wrong, and Peggy Cass? Well, you know, there's a lot of talk about how women should make men happy. Why shouldn't they make us happy? I think this is a really good question. I'm so glad Peggy Cass said this because she's right. Men should make women happy, but the problem is you can't write a book for women and say men should make women happy because then you're... You're doing the victim thing, and it's just complaining. There's nothing you can do about it in a book to women. That's what she's talking about belongs more in a book for men. I mean, you can complain if you want, but the purpose of Fasting Womanhood is not to complain. It is to show women the true principles, not techniques and not strategies, that you can develop in yourself so that you can help to create a lifelong love affair with the man you love. It's something men learn and do on their own, like we learn fascinating womanhood on our, our own, but she is right. 
What's wrong with that? I'll buy that. Right. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. The idea, and the ideal job for a girl who feels that she should be angelic and all that, seems to be a great job for her be working in the harem. But I voted for people because she's southern, and they're very feminine, well known to be very feminine. They're well known. Yeah. Okay, that's one vote for number three. And uh, well, what what have you written on your ballot there? Well, by and large, I agree in part with what Helen had to say. Not completely. I have to disqualify myself. That's what I have to do. You're, you're on what basis? Well, on the basis of the dumb architecture of these New York theaters. That's the basis. I came down from the dressing room early, and I walked through the hall, and the hall is where a telephone is, a pay phone, and uh, Helen, I assume it was Helen, was there making a phone call, but then I, you know. You don't know which one oh, Helen. Yes, I, well, you think was, you saw? yes, I think she said her name, oh. if I recall correctly. But you're, I think this is better than a wrong vote, you see, as far as my own I personal I think it's so neat that he was honest. honest. I have always admired that about him. In the morning. Okay. One disqualification, one vote for number three, and what's Kitty going to do? Well, I voted for number two because I think that number three was quoting from the book when she said part of it is the spiritual side, and I think number two looks very spiritual, and so I think it's she. So it's one for two and one for three in Derwood Kirby? I voted for number two also, and practically for the same reasons that you've chosen, Kitty. Number two. Okay. So everybody has made up their mind. Will, the real. Helen Andelin, please stand up. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of reason, one of the big reasons no one picked her is because she is shy and she, maybe they pictured somebody being more, sounding more confident than her. I don't know. She, they, none of them picked her. And the cash register just rang up a big $500 for the ladies <laughs> over there. Congratulations. Helen will be back to you in a moment. Uh, number two, you got two wrong votes. What is your real name, uh, uh, please? What do you do? My name is Virginia Thorin Rice, and I'm a fashion photographer in southern Manhattan. Good. <laughs> and number three, you got one wrong vote. What is your real name, please, and what do you do? My name is Paula Stevenson Humphreys. I'm originally from Atlanta. I have recently moved here, and I'm a water pollution control chemist. <laughs> Great for you. Bill, did, did, did your honesty pay off? Was, that, was it the right girl you did see her? Yes, yes. I actually didn't hear her say a name. I could not over, help but overhear her saying to someone, thank you for the article that you wrote or something like that. She had, so I assume it would be the real one who would have an article written about her. That's All right, he didn't want you to waste a vote. Helen and no. friends, it's been a joy having you with us on To Tell the Truth. We'll read your book and thank you very much. You notice they said, we'll talk to you later, and they didn't. If we could find that lost uh, bit, uh, we, we would, we will. If we do, if we do, we'll, we'll share it with you. And there's other shows that she was on around that time. She did, it was a publicity tour. We're trying to find them. It's very difficult because it's been so long. But anyway, thank you so much for joining us. You can find our books and workbooks and down below. And hope you subscribe and like like this channel and this has helped millions of women around the world for over 50 years so take care everyone and stay feminine <laughs>